Hey everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at Greater Hadia Farm. So I mean in a previous video I did say this. Maybe you guys want to see me try and solo the other dungeons as well. That was back in January. So yeah I um I want to start going through all the dungeons solo again. The issue I have now is I'm kind of a higher gear score. I've actually recorded this video once before, but I didn't like how it turned out. I feel like I didn't explain everything as well as I could have, so... This is a bit of a re-record, and I'm an even higher gear score now. So I am at like 10k, which is gonna make this dungeon extremely easy in comparison to, you know, being 6 or 7k. It's gonna make, make it a lot easier, because this is one of the harder dungeons. It is one of the shortest dungeons in the game to do, though, so... We're gonna start off, let me just quickly reset, make sure we're all good. And then we're gonna head on in. Alright, so welcome to the inside of Great Idea Farm. Now, it looks like there's a lot going on on the dungeon map over here, but there's really not a lot. So, when we come on in, there's gonna be mobs that spawn in. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually sprint just along this path right here. Just sprint the same way I am. You know, just slightly. We're gonna just be running past all the mobs. Now, if you want to fight these, you can do. Um, I mean, if you want to get some drops off them, so they've got... I guess they'll, they'll drop some official shards every now and then. You know, you'll maybe get something off them. I don't really bother. The only ones that are pain to deal with is the stitched specimen over here because they just shoot out poison gas and run around in circles like Singe from League. So that's the first thing that comes to my mind at least. Also, be aware, there's a few patrols that come down this path here. So, we've got one here, and then there's one behind it. The boss is now going to spawn in as well. So, this is the first boss of the dungeon. I'm actually going to take out these patrols. Typically, you don't really need to. Because you, you can't actually just run past them. But, um, you know, they're, they're a pain. They get in the way. I think there's one of a patrol further down. This is the guy that runs around in circles like Singed, but we got him in time. <laughs> but, yeah, um... The patrols are like the only real issue with the mobs in here. Most of them you can just skip. So yeah, as you can tell, this is a undead poison sort of themed dungeon. Everyone's favorite areas in video games. Poison. Who doesn't love poison? Alright, so. Boss number one has spawned in. It triggers when you come close enough. You'll see the one, whatever her name is, pops up. And then she'll summon this guy. The rotten flesh golem. Which... The golem is <laughs> has probably the most upsetting voice line in the game. With the rotten, rotten flesh golem, there's actually a lot going on. This guy is the hardest boss in the dungeon in the dungeon to deal with. He's a bit of a pain, so I think this will probably be easier for ranged classes he does deal a lot of damage there's a lot going on now try and explain it as it happens some mechanics might not actually happen so you'll first notice that i've got leech ready leech is um very important if you're a dark runner for this boss because he has a frenzy that you can steal off him which makes him weaker and you stronger um the pool that he's standing in as well Sometimes it gives him a poison buff. There's like slimes that go into it. They don't always trigger the, the buff, but you can walk up to the pool, press F, and that will get rid of his buff. So you want to be around this pool. Now, if you want to also avoid the patrols here, you could just straight up go right behind him. Over here. And fight him over this side. I'm going to see if I can get behind him without triggering the boss. Okay, good. <laughs> Usually I get behind him early, but I've been explaining everything. So, you actually want to be behind him if you're going to use stealth as well, because if, if you try and stealth and walk right at him, for some reason the stealth in this dungeon sometimes just disables itself, it's a bit weird. So, if you're behind him, stealth should work fine. So you have the poison pull that you have to get rid of, you've got his frenzy that you need to steal, and then the other big mechanic is he spawns a mob that will latch onto one of the party members, in this case just you, and it will follow you around and if it gets close enough it'll explode and do a lot of damage. But if you kill it before it gets close enough, you're good, which is where my triple slash comes in handy, because that will deal with him. For, uh, if you're not using the AOA triple slash, or you don't have any sort of ranged ability to help with that, 
that might be a problem for melee. This is why I say it's probably easier for ranged, because you can kite that thing around. Even though he does, the boss does have a lot of slows that he throws on you as well. One other thing as well is he also throws little rotten meat chunks out, which explode and also do damage. But you can see them when they appear and they're quite easy to avoid. Alright, so let's actually engage the boss and you'll see some of this in action now. I just wanted to explain it because I know it's going to go by really fast. So, let's pop everything. Apparently the pull's already got the poison effect on it. Oh no! So, <laughs> I tag strike there at the wrong time. There's his frenzy as well, so we're going to grab that. So yeah, that's a mistake that you could make. You could accidentally do that and this is not looking good for me right now, is it? I might need to pop a potion here, which I don't want to do. There's the Rotten Flesh Chunks, but that was the mob. So a Tiger Strike right onto the mob that you're not supposed to touch. And I, I took a lot of damage. We got him anyway. As you can see, I also stole the Frenzy during that. Like I said, there's a lot going on in that fight. So it all needs to be executed very quickly. And, uh, you know, if you don't do it properly, you can lose a lot of health, as I just did. Luckily, I've got a lot of potions, so even if... You know, it did get dire. We could have used those to escape. I would recommend using buffs. Like, a lot of buffs. Bring in buffs, potions, if you're of lower gear score. Because <laughs> that guy especially is probably the biggest problem. And also, it'll, it'll make your dungeoning experience a little faster. So, I'm going to pop one more piece of food. Just because we're now going to be running through the next set of mobs. There's actually one already ahead. I don't know if he's supposed to be spawned already. That's fine. We're going to start running. They're all start spawning alongside our left. We're going to come off to the right here. There's a big circle of skeletons are going to spawn. And then another big circle should spawn as well. Yeah, and then we're going to come on over to the water over here. Walk past this patrol. And then the second boss should spawn right here. Okay, so. Here I'm just going to back up. This is probably the easiest boss in the dungeon. The big mechanical hair is she will spawn gravestones that you need to press F on to destroy. Otherwise, it spawns mobs that will do a fair amount of damage to you. Also, she'll like, she got a bunch of spells. I'll show this one as it goes because it's quite a simple fight. So we're just going to run circles around her. She's spawning in a tombstone now. You see a small circle for where that's going to spawn. We just want to press F on that, get rid of it right away. And she'll just keep doing that. And... In between that, you can get quite a lot of damage off. Also, there'll be big circles where she's going to put a big firebolt down. So you want to also avoid that. On top of that is the big semicircle thing she puts down there. If you're on the opposite side of that, you will take a lot of damage. So be aware. Yeah, as you can see, she's actually fairly easy in comparison to the last boss. And then we also have this patrol now that's on us. Like I said, the patrols can be an issue. So, I'm just going to pop a bit more food. And Hadia here is going to walk off down this path to the left. As you can see, there's a lot more to the dungeon. There's a bridge over there. There's nothing going on over there, as far as I'm aware. There's just more to it. I guess there's probably quests or something that need you to come in here for reasons. I'm not entirely sure. So, there's this one patrol here. What we're actually going to do is we're going to hammer over here. We're going to use our teleport backdrop and I'm going to stealth so we can avoid all those mobs there. There's a bunch of them spawning down the path that he walks. So we're just going to skip all of that. And then you want to back up here and walk right up to him. Because if you're standing right where he stops, he doesn't trigger the boss. You've actually got to get some distance on him. So a good way to do that is to walk into the pit. If you actually walk this way, there's got to be two big mobs that spawn and um, they're not a problem to deal with. They're just, you know, something you don't want to fight. And now we have the final boss of the dungeon, Marmus the Reaper, who, um, as you can see, has a buff here, saying summoned from the void and is almost invulnerable to ordinary attacks. So, he doesn't take a lot of damage unless you bring him into a golden circle that one of the ghosts in here will actually spawn. You'll see one of them will say sun, and wh whichever one says sun, a gold circle will appear, and then you want to drag him into there. So, I'll show you this fight as it goes, because this one's quite easy. So please avenge us. We go over that way. We're going to get out the circles. He has four big circles, and that's like his main ability. So you just don't want to stand in those, because otherwise he marks you, and he'll do even more damage. And then he'll spawn a bunch of skeletons. This is not a problem for me, because I can AoE them all down.
And then he also did just brand me that. I actually didn't pop all my buffs, which is kind of dumb. I should have done that. And they spawns two clones as well. I mean, if you're AOing, they go down pretty fast. And um, that's it. That's all there really is to the last guy in that dungeon. As long as you're in the circle. This might, one might be the one that's difficult for range people because you've got to keep them in the circle. And then you might want to be avoiding damage. You might want to kite them around. But, um... Yeah, he's super easy. We didn't get a Sunglow Luna gem, which is very sad. But hey, you know, that's the way it goes. And again, I'll just show these guys off because they do spawn in. We'll just walk over here. Back drop outs. As you can see, those two spawn in. So they're a bit bigger. I think they've got a little slightly more health, but you know. Just to avoid all those mobs. And you again, if you want to run through this dungeon and do the mobs, you can do. But what makes this dungeon nice and quick is you can just run past them all. And it's pretty much just a straight line. So yeah, let's come on out. We don't get any major, like, you don't get any Starlight Archeum in here or anything. But the chance of Sun Glow Lunar Gems is always there and you get in the Claire Symphium Shards. So it's always a good idea to uh, do your daily runs of this. That's how I like to play the game, honestly. I just do a lot of instance runs. Because that's just me. That's what I've been doing a lot of on stream. I have to say that um, I've been doing a lot of this on stream and Codebreaker and... Yeah, Codebreaker and Snoop. That was it. I <laughs> I couldn't remember Snoop's name for a moment. I, but they actually gave me some advice on going for the dungeon while I was streaming it. So I just want to shout them out because I always appreciate the help over on stream. Thank you for watching everyone, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and join the Discord as well, because we've had a community starting to build in there, which is cool to see, and hopefully we can get a few more people in, you know? You guys can all help each other in there with arcade stuff, and I'm always answering stuff in there as well. And follow me on Twitch as well, you can ask me questions there too. So, yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next video.